Good evening, everybody. Welcome back to episode number 17. I think I got that right, right? Episode 17. This will be a quick one. Thanks, everybody, for watching these videos. I appreciate your time as always. Um, always thankful, always grateful that you take your time. In the world today, we have a thousand things we're doing all the time. And we're going all different directions, raising multiple children, taking care of your family, taking care of your parents, taking care of your wife, taking care of your husband, taking care of whatever, you know what I mean? Working all day long, coming home and trying to do certain things. So I get it, and I try to make these videos as quick as possible. And somebody will say, well, you shouldn't hurry the word of God. My point is, I want to make this quick, because I know everybody has something to do. So, we're going to go right ahead and jump right into it. Uh, thanks for everybody's comments on the last video. I uh, appreciate that. Thank you. All right, King James Bible, Luke chapter 4, verse 8. Open up your King James if you have it. It is, in my opinion, the Word of God. A lot of pushback on that, but no surprise there. Um, if you have ESV, open that up as well. Again, another reminder, these scriptures are put here side by side so you can make a decision on something. You don't have to agree. Not everybody's going to agree. Some people agree. Some people disagree. And that's okay. But the problem I find not only throughout my lifetime, uh, I'm a young man at 50, but uh, what I've noticed is nobody ever wants to read the other ones. They just will tell you, trust us, this is the best one. you know. And, and then next year it'll be, trust us, this is the best one. Uh, this is the best study Bible. This is better than the last study Bible. And it goes on and on. All right, Luke 4, 8. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. In Luke chapter 4, verse 8, it reads in the ESV, which is the English Standard Version from 2001, And Jesus answered him, it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. Now, to make a point here, um, you can also not find this verse. Someone made an interesting comment the other day, and I'm going to paraphrase. I haven't got back to that person yet. Um, I will. Um, again, schedule, busy, you know. Work for a living, do this also on the side. What do they call them? Pastors that do work and do this and bi vocational, something like that. Anywho, um, they said, "Well, you know, they haven't found that one." So my 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 answer or question, however you want to look at it, just because you haven't found it, how do you prove it is? So if you found Luke four seven, a piece of uh, parchment or uh, papyrus and one of the unicals, uh, unicals and uh, you find it, you say, ah, there's proof. So here's my problem with that. You are, in a way, textually agnostic. I don't know if that's a term, but I think I just made it up. I'm going to go ahead and coin that, put on, put on a T-shirt. I'm just kidding, I would never put on a T-shirt because I do not believe in profiting off of the Word of God by making mugs and T-shirts and so forth. That's me. Someone else can do what they want. I'm not in control of them. They got free will. It's a beautiful thing. But if you have 4-7, but you don't have 4-8, but you have 4-7, so you say, ha, it exists. But you can't find 4-8 hasn't showed up yet, so therefore it doesn't exist. Interesting. So you don't have faith in the Word of God. You have to have evidence or proof. Now, as time goes on, more and more evidence has come out. In fact, the same verses that are found today, years, years ago, they would say there's no evidence for it. And then there's evidence for it. Interesting how it works out. So when you're arguing that, you know, that they all must not be in there because it's not in the early manuscripts, which is funny because early, some will call them church fathers, have it because they used it and even in other writings, but suddenly it doesn't exist. It's a whole mess people get get into. But I will say this. Let's scroll down here. All the modern Bibles agree. Jesus never said Satan. 
Well, and I, now I shouldn't. I didn't list all the modern Bibles here. There's more, but how much room do I got? I didn't put the NET in there or any of the the, uh, the WEB. I think I missed the uh, uh, the Modern English Bible, and there's a few that I didn't put in there. Uh, but they all fall in line with the ESV, NIV. So Satan it doesn't exist in the ESV. When I say someone just said it exists in other scriptures. I'm talking about this one. It doesn't exist in ESV, NIV, RSV, ASV, NASB, RV, WH, and Catholic Bibles like NAB, NRSV, the ESV Catholic edition, which is interesting. And I will say this, the two reams did have in there. So I'm a little confused, though. If you got Jerome who had it, but suddenly it does, it didn't exist in these, kind of weird, isn't it? I'm not saying I'm a big Jerome fan, but Erasmus had it, Jerome had it, Augustine, Ignatius. I don't remember Polycarp. I apologize if he has not written that. Uh, many other writers have had it, but, you know, let's ignore that. The King James Bible does follow the Geneva, Matthews, Tyndale, etc. Right down the line. And, and people say, oh, just a translation, it can make a mistake. Yeah, there's been printing errors. There's no doubt about it. I've never argued against it. And this is why the old Catholic Church, the new Catholic Church, and the modern churches stay away from the Sola Scriptura. The words of the priest and the popes are basically like today's pastors and their books and their commentaries and seminars and conferences and lectures which they make money off of all take you away from focusing on the words of God. Now you see old Catholic Church and new Catholic Church if you look at my uh, old podcast I talked about Sede Vacantist and uh, Sede Vacantism and the old Latin Mass, the new Latin Mass and all the uh, upheaval there. And so you'll see how the new Catholic Bibles don't have it but the old Catholic Bibles do. Why? Pretty interesting, isn't it? What's the agenda? Well, we already know the Vatican Council too. They came together, the Catholics and Protestants, to make an ecumenical Bibles. Fact, not fiction. All right, well, thank you for tuning in tonight's uh, episode of the Scripture, this first of tonight. I appreciate your time as always. I hope this leads you to whatever direction you're trying to go in to take that moment, look at all these other Bibles, and say to yourself, hmm, what's going on here? Somebody says, oh, there's nothing nefarious. Well, you can say that if you want. We'll be in, uh, I don't know if nefarious is the word I'll be using for it, but uh, don't tell me they're on the up and up, because they ain't. All right, with that, thank you, and have a beautiful evening. God bless.